Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Norville. This edition stops stories. The Office of the Prime Minister leads a collaborative approach to citizen safety. 154 government services to be automated by 2021. Invest St. Lucia unveils the winning logo for its business incubator and accelerator program. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports and the NTN Nouvelle of Creole. In an holistic approach to citizen safety, the Office of the Prime Minister and the Royal St. Lucia Police Force have embarked on a series of consultations aimed at tackling crime at the community level. Anissia Antoine reports. The Performance Management and Delivery Unit, PMDU, has partnered with the Royal St. Lucia Police Force in the area of citizen safety with the aim of reducing the serious crime rate in St. Lucia. The RSLPF recently held a meeting with various community groups in Groselay, geared towards forming a closer partnership between the two entities. Elvis Thomas is the Acting Assistant Superintendent of Police and the officer in charge of the Groselay, Rodney Bay and Babano Police Stations. We've realized that the issue of crime and violence is not just a police problem, but it is a situation where the police and all the stakeholders can come together to dialogue, to discuss issues relating to crime and violence. So at the end of the day, we can have safer and peaceful communities. The Acting Assistant Superintendent of Police informed that the RSLPF will be working closely with community groups to ensure that each community has an active neighborhood watch group. We have those um, communities with no neighborhood watch groups. We will work with them to establish these groups to ensure that our communities are safer. We are also working with the businesses to ensure that these businesses are safer. And so as a nation, we want to ensure that persons can walk and live um, freer and so that they are safe. We know that there is a fear of crime and so we want persons to understand that the Royal St. Lucia Police Force will do everything within its power to keep St. Lucia and St. Lucia safe. Sharon Gardner Hippolyte, head of PMDU, noted that the aspiration for 2019 was to reduce crime by 10%. Because the police had been taking very specific action that was basically targeted from the data that they collected. As a result, over the next few weeks and few months, the um, rate of crime then moved out to different areas and the police um, adjusted and then also took again very specific action. Our serious crime rate is now at about 4% and the police are again taking very specific actions in relation to reducing crime. Some of it has to do with targeted patrols but they also want to be able to reach out to the community and they are starting with the Groselay community because Groselay is one of our hotspot areas in relation to crime. The final community program for Groselay will take place on Tuesday the 7th of January 2020. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. Transport Minister Honorable Guy Joseph has lauded a new initiative that will automate an estimated 154 government services across eight agencies by 2021. More in this report by Julita Peter. The launch of a digital government services platform is earmarked for early 2020. Speaking ahead of next year's launch, Transport Minister Honorable Guy Joseph said it would be a remarkable feat if all the components of the project were to be achieved within the projected time frame. He lamented the country's slow embrace of the emerging ICT sector. According to the Transport Minister, the new platform will establish a strategic roadmap that will digitally revolutionize the public service, taking a modernized approach to many of the archaic methods in public service delivery. We are still trying to do too many things the old way. We still have Prado's delivering letters <laughs> in this day and age. Yet still, the same persons who do that on a daily basis speak to their friends, seeing their faces all over the world, and when something happens in St. Lucia, I get the news out of America before I get it in St. Lucia. That is our reality. So we know that it exists. 
and we know how to use it. The question is, why is government so slow in moving in this particular direction? Are we afraid as a country that jobs would be impacted? All of the countries in the world where they have gone to e-government or DigiGov, we have not seen a reduction in employment. It just shifts employment into a different area with a different focus. So as we undertake this very important project, we need to consider the realities that we are faced with as a country and what we need to do to be successful. Phase one of the Digital Government Services Platform will focus on transforming the Transportation Department and the services provided through this agency. Some of the components would include online application for renewal of driver's licenses, in addition to e-payment for renewals and alerts and notification on the status of applications via WhatsApp and email. Because it's not just about what's going to happen in transport I am interested in. That's just one step. And you may think that there's a level of bias there. But we analyzed the situation. <coughs> and I said, if I look at the number of vehicles registered in the system and the number of persons with driver's licenses in St. Lucia, that may be the ministry where m the most persons in the population transact with. And I think it's a very good starting point to be able to launch this very important initiative. Phase two of the project, among other things, will focus on allowing online application for omnibus learner's permit, driver's practical and theory examinations, along with international driving permits. The project, according to the Transport Minister, is in keeping with the vision of the government of St. Lucia to provide hassle-free public services to the citizenry and the international community. From the Department of the Public Service Communications Unit, Julita Peter reporting. The Department of Health and Wellness continues to make maternal and child health a major priority by enhancing programs to monitor the health of children. More in this report from Funnel Neptune. The Department of Health and Wellness recently launched a new national child health record and revised maternal, child and adolescent health manual aimed at improving maternal and child health in St. Lucia. The new national child health record will serve as a tool to monitor a child's growth, development and use of health services from birth to five years. Principal Nursing Officer for Denry Hospital, Alicia Baptist, spoke on the significance of the maternal and child health manual. This manual is a booklet containing information on safe pregnancy, delivery and child health. It ensures continuity of care and provides health education to parents. As such, it will prove to be an effective tool in promoting and protecting the health of mothers and children. Maternal and child health has and continues to be a major priority area for the government of St. Lucia and the community nursing service. Minister for Health and Wellness, Senator the Honorable Mary Isaac says, she is extremely pleased with the launch of the child health record and revised maternal and child health manual as it demonstrates the ministry's commitment to improving maternal and child health service delivery. The manual is a guide for practice in the management and care of mothers, of mother, father, and baby. And both documents help to support SDG 3, which is good health and well-being, and SDG 5, gender equality. Now, I am very, very impressed that throughout this presentation this morning and in the book itself, there is an emphasis on mother, father, and child. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Merlin Fredericks James says she is extremely grateful for the support of individuals from both the public and private sector working to ensure the establishment of the new child health record 
and revised maternal and child health manual. Dr. Frederick James also spoke on the great strides made to improve maternal and child health. We have been do undergoing many, many initiatives. Um, maybe you will hear um, others speak more about the other initiatives that we've been involved in. I know many of you have been involved in training. So we've been doing a lot of training um, for caring for pregnant mothers, um, caring for newborns, especially children that are born you know, with some um, difficulty or um, preterm births, etc. And we will continue those efforts to ensure that we have healthy mothers, healthy babies, and healthy children throughout the lifespan. The new National Child Health Record will be rolled out in January 2020. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Fennel Neptune. This is NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. What's in the food you're eating? Do you really even know? All the chemicals and hormones used to accelerate their growth. All the artificial flavoring, sweeteners and colors too. We consume and we don't spare a thought for the damage that they'll do. The that no, they do. think about the children. Think about the children. How will we save them? Chemicals and GMOs are not the solution. Use organic and join. Excessive agrochemical use, additives, and genetically modified foods are harmful to health and the environment. Join the good food revolution. Grow, buy, and consume organic. A message from Rye St. Lucia and the Ministry of Sustainable Development with funding from the GEF Small Grants Program, UNDP. The good food revolution. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. I'm Ryan O'Brien with your update from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. St. Lucia's under-15 cricket captain, Can Elcock, was named vice-captain of the Winnet Islands under-15 cricket team to compete in the West Indies Rising Stars under-15 cricket tournament. Can was the only player from St. Lucia selected, but two of his teammates, Tyler Venner and Isaiah Jones, were named as reserves. The Winwoods team comprises Stephen Pascal, captain, Rion Mitchell, Can Elcock, Kirsten Murray, Justin John, Cody Grant, Jason Vidal, Kani Lewis, Levante McDowell, Kain George, Corey Celestin, Jelani Joseph, and Raquel Sylvester. The reserves, apart from Venna and Jones, are Zach Thomas and Dorian Toussaint. A head coach and manager are expected to be named next month. The improved sports facility in Miku North is expected to provide amenities to cover for all levels of human development. This was outlined by Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, Benson Emile, during the start turning ceremony for the upgrade of what was the Miku playing field. This is what has been planned. As I said, this is the area of focus for now. This uh, and, and the courts, this will come in the second phase. But what, what, what the space provides is for other amenities to be added. Now, this is not part of you know, the National Sports Info Infrastructure Program, but it is being placed here so we can begin to realize that we can utilize the spaces you know, for other sports and recreational activities. You know, even for our younger, younger, um, our kindergarten, you know, people and so on. At the completion of the upgrade, Miku North is expected to be upgraded to a sporting complex. And that's the end of our updates for this week and the year from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. We look forward to be with you in the new year. Until then, I'm Ryan O'Brien urging you to be safe and join us when we return. Thanks, Ryan. Following an intense judging period of over 100 entries, Invest St. Lucia ISL is pleased to announce the winner of its recent name and logo contest for its soon-to-be-established business incubator and accelerator program. 
A grand reveal was hosted at ISL's head office, where DeAndre Louis of Monrepo was awarded the EC $5,000 prize. Dave Headley is the project coordinator. I would like to take the time to thank all 126 persons who participated in the competition, the youngest person being 16 years of age. The review committee did express their amazement with the creative work submitted, a testament to the talent St. Lucia has. However, this morning the spotlight is on one young St. Lucian who has capitalized and left their mark on designing a logo and name for a program that will hopefully impact lives locally, regionally and internationally throughout its business support programs to elevating St. Lucia startups and existing businesses to the next level. The winning submission included the name Boost in a bright logo with a launch rocket, a symbol typical for accelerator projects. The name also signifies the intended nature of the business incubator and accelerator program. DeAndre Lewis currently attending Middlesex County College in New Jersey. Although his friend Aaliyah James collected the prize on his behalf, 19-year-old DeAndre Louis was elated about winning the grand prize. He intends to use the prize money to ease the burden of tuition cost. Stay with NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Hypertension is a deadly disease that is common in St. Lucia. We depend on blood pressure monitors to determine if our blood pressure is too high or too low. Should the reading on these measuring devices be incorrect, we are literally putting our lives at risk. Doctors, caregivers and patients, get your blood pressure meters verified by the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards to ensure the accuracy of measuring devices. Look for the green pass sticker on the blood pressure meter at your next visit to the doctor. The correct reading can mean the difference between life and death. For more information, contact the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards at 456-0546 or email slbs at candw.lc or visit the website at www.slbs.org.lc. St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, making quality and standards our way of life. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Mr. Madam, Department of Kenny Responsibility for Information, Government Settlesi, GIS, Assembly Television National, PIA, NTN, Kaposato, Nouvelle Akoyol, Kaposato, Primus Hutchinson. Premier Minister Settlesi, Onuab Allen Chasney, Kaposat Mapi, Canada, Puchen Prisia Gwadis Kisyon, Epi Apamio, Sion Epi Premier Minister Canada, Sasi Justin Trudeau, Apami Se Divers CG, Kiyokai Diskite, Ce changement de climat, l'occasion qui avait là pour investir à cette ci et épouvement en sa pays à acheter et vendre à l'autre pays. Le pays Canada, c'est un qui a une bonne relation. Et puis cette ci avec le reste, c'est le pays Commonwealth Caribla pour un pile d'années à présent. Les deux relations sont battues sur une grande signification à l'immeuble de cette ci avec l'autre membre nation Caribla qui a habité à Canada. Et aussi des deux relations en affaires commerciales à l'histoire du pays Canada, là il vient pour support. Pour relation Caribla. Pendant que le Premier ministre Chasney au Canada, il a profité de l'occasion aussi pour assister et puis les officiers des corporations commerciales du Canada pour discuter l'occasion qui a existé pour conduire l'investissement et pour aussi former le gymnase. Corporation des affaires commerciales du pays Canada a toujours supporté et assisté les Grec Business Canada pour faire connexion et puis la place les étrangers. En absence du Premier ministre Chasney, ministre des Affaires et Développement économique, Honorable Guy Joseph, Kayasid, comme Premier ministre. Comme pays qui a fait une préparation pour la saison Noël, les officiers qui sont responsables pour la santé des animaux, le ministère de l'Agriculture et les officiers de l'Environnement et de la Santé publique qui ont informé les bouchers concernant ces permis et les certifications qui ont mérité avant d'établir les halviens et les assassins des animaux. Le chef officier des affaires agricoles, Columbus Philippe, Expliquez la façon que ce boucher a ni pour chercher pour faire cette certification. Le premier bagage que ce boucher a fait, um, c'est visiter le ministre de la Santé pour regarder pour un permis pour, 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 pour ça opérer en hall. Dès qu'il y a un permis, il y a pour aller en police station nan, pour jouer une licence pour tuer les animaux. Et dès qu'il y a des doc, de, 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 de documents, dès à présent, le ministre agricole a entré. Et puis, il y a fait ça, il y a fait un anti-mortem inspection. 
Mais nous pas faire anti-mortem inspection en tout temps pour qu'on ait des morceaux de documents à la ministre ministre de la Santé et puis pour l'Islam. Il y a un autre grand chef, en département de l'environnement, santé publique, René Pierre, qui dit que si les officiers ont visité Alvian Yonbouché et qui n'ont pas ces documents pour présenter, la y a vraiment une complication pour lui et puis c'est Vienne qui est Si on n'a pas ces documents du ministre agricole ou en risque de perdre Vienne, parce qu'il n'y a pas de saisir et puis il n'y a pas de déposer. Si pour une inspection ça fait, ou ne pour présenter document dat ou j'ai fait anti-mortem ça là dat des animaux ça là ne ça te ça aller ou ça tuer et quand nous quand regarder papier papier yo ministre agricole kai bawa kai also il kai ni pour ça yo kai tag animaux tout yo kai mange en zano en zo ils animaux et des papier exemple papier exemple kai pas en pas So, nous avons regardé si c'est papier ça là, c'est pour les animaux ça. So, ça c'est pour empêcher un monde, pour les animaux à, dat yo te présenté à, et yo, yo mené en l'autre animaux. So, depuis non n'y papier ça, nous avons regardé, nous avons inspecté bien là, uh, pour les animaux à qui tuer à, et non, le mot dit non, c'est inspecteur qui a inspecté à, qui a utilisé les animaux ça là, en zoé les animaux à, boucher à passer pour ces points. So, inspecteur kai mm -hmm. point. So, inspecteur kai ale fou, le kwen ka fe examination, il kai gade tout vien la, il kai gade tout se organ la, kan di dan la, il kai gade pou fousia, il kai gade noa, il kai gade um, trip la, si tout se baye sa bon, il kai examine tet la, il kai gade si ni pièce disease, si ni bruise, um, si ni pièce malade, la ni achay malade ki ka pote an zanimo, ka dan malade ki ka krape koi prezente an zanimo, ça a présenté pour le monde, ça a affecté le monde à Zouel, ça a été dit en anglais, um, zoonosis. Um, so, non, ni pour assurer que c'est pour ça qu'il est important que le public la gagne, vienne, qui j'ai trouvé qu'on inspecte, um, parce que si vient n'a pas qu'à passer, nous allons condamner le vienne, ça là, ce n'est pas qu'à aller pour ça vendre. Um, nous allons tirer en la place là. C'est des officiers, ça là, qui peuvent être assurés au programme NTN pour indiquer le public là, avec les bouchers, concernés responsabilité les bouchers pour ces animaux durant la saison Noël. Le ministère de la Santé a commencé un programme pour conduire l'examination Kayakai à PIA pour aider la santé du peuple. Le programme a apporté un step et uh, a examiné principalement les citoyens à l'âge de 18 ans pour 69 ans. Le chef officier de santé, Dr. Chana C. Felbot, car fait public la savent qui y ont déjà pris bonne précaution concernant ces officiers qui ont visité ces divers résidents pour conduire ces examinations cette année-là. Ils m'ont là pas juste venu car ils ont commencé à s'envoler bah ils m'ont savent cette année c'est qu'à bien payer mon bocal yo c'est mon ça nous j'ai traîné au bah nous camarons un ID ou yo ou qu'à ouais ID à ID à qu'à deux mon ça qu'à un ministre santé et un statistique mon ça vient faire surveiller la caillou. Selon Dr Philbert et cette step ça là, c'est un qui a apporté un pile significatif pour santé, pour aider ou abattre diverses maladies. Puis là, nous avons regardé comment il y a des gens qui sont en cette liste. Huit personnes, en dix personnes qui sont en cette liste, qui sont morts de maladies. Donc, ça veut dire que c'est ça qui a tué les gens. Donc, mm -hmm. so, si un maladie a tué les gens, comme un ministre de mm -hmm. santé, nous avons besoin de regarder à ce qui est ce maladie qui a tué les gens. Mm -hmm. Qui ça nous a fait, peut nous a fait, qui a mal fait, qui a causé mm -hmm. pour jouer ces maladies ça, et qui ça nous comme ministre santé, ça fait pour aider mm -hmm. peuple là. Puis sans chaire de ça c'est mon langue à manger bas et qui a fait au malade. Mais si nous comme ministre santé ouais, c'est là non chaire mon langue à manger, un chaire sel bas ça, nous ni pour faire ça nous a créé policy pour try aider yo, try à um, garder si nous ça jouer manger qui ni moins sel bas yo. Si nous avons tiré l'argent à ce que nous avons gagné pour que nous avons gagné, qui prime le bail. Donc, tout ce bail, nous avons eu la formation, nous avons parlé de ce l'autre ministre là-bas, nous avons parlé de l'autre pays pour que nous aider nous pour faire ces changements là-bas. C'est l'officier de santé qui a examiné les gens qui 
pit ni maladi che pisadu pressure e vi maladi a fisi morio exeko sa no atwa but novella mo ka mesio otta pogade mo ka bo ya vitasio pou je ne pi mo ko na ngai pou se to lot novel a ko yo messi appeal primus here's a look at what's happening to us weather wise Generally fair and breezy, becoming cloudy at times, with a few scattered showers. The Atlantic high-pressure system will continue to generate brisk, easterly winds and rough seas across our region during the next five days. Low-level clouds drifting with the wind flow will cause a few showers to develop over the eastern Caribbean islands during the next 24 hours. Tides for Castries Harbour, low at 3.53 p.m., High at 10.20 p.m. Tides for Viewford Bay, low at 5.20 p.m. High at 11.27 p.m. Seas, locally rough with waves and northerly to northeasterly swells, 7 to 10 feet or 2.1 to 3 meters. Small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to exercise extreme caution due to brisk winds and rough seas. The sun will rise Friday at 6.22 a.m. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly for 2019. We here at the GIS and NTN have been pleased to bring you the developments in government and national events. We look forward to serving you in 2020. On behalf of the entire team, I am Janelle Norville wishing you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Mm -hmm.